I, I used to do a radio show in college and, you know, played like a lot of music on cred or, you know, more experimental noise stuff and, you know, the idea now that you can make mixes with that kind of stuff and, you know, just put them on the internet. People can hear them anytime, anywhere. Yeah, I think it's great. In the past, we've never done the, like, stream your record, you know, prior to releasing it. We grew up kind of before the internet had sort of influenced our, or the larger public's listening habits. I think that even though the, some of us take advantage of the, the internet, we tend to romanticize the idea of like a release date. We had already separately come up with this idea to do um, like radio shows. We just like making mixes for each other. We thought since there's the radio vibe on this record, we could sort of just for fun make our own little internet radio thing and make mixes for our fans. We could maybe put stuff from the new album in these radio shows. There can be this opportunity to have like sort of like a worldwide simultaneous listening party, you know, like everyone, you know, hopefully like if, if we can get it to work, we'll, we'll hear the record for the first time together. It can be this sort of communal event. The same way that like when we were younger, you know, you'd rush to the store to go get the new Nirvana CD or something and then like come home and, you know, call your friends like track by track or the next day, you know, you'd come in and talk about it. Usually when we play live, you know, going back from our earliest shows, we, we tend to do segues in between songs, you know, don't like to like just play a song and stop. We're just talking about different sounds, different things we could do in between songs to segue and Dave, who's A.V. Tear, his brother had given him this CD of like, radio IDs that he had done, because his brother used to be a mainstream top 40 DJ in the, the 80s and 90s. And it kind of reminded us of, of the way like radio IDs and sound effects sounded. You know, it's sort of like its own specialized school of sound design or music concrete or something. You know, it's like there's nothing really that sounds like it. Um, and you kind of throw all these weird intense sci-fi sounds at people um, with like crazy vocal effects and pitch effects. They accept it and they digest it because it's in between a couple of top 40 songs. So we we're like, oh, we'll just stick them in the set like a song will end and then they'll be this thing that says like more continuous music and this kind of weird robot voice and then we'll just kick into the next song. And there isn't like a mission to me, like let's, let's take weird sounds and make them sort of like slip them into someone's consciousness. I think it's cool if that happens, you know, by, by having sort of the, the pop side of Animal Collective. It's, you know, it's cool that we get people to maybe hear the ideas we have that come from more experimental uh, or avant-garde music that they wouldn't hear otherwise. The pop stuff is there um, because we just like pop music. We like melody, we like rhythm, you know, it's, to us it's, we just kind of like to throw all those things together, but it, it's not really to get, you know, one thing in, in, in people's consciousness in like a subversive way or anything like that. <laughs>